All right, I want you to listen to this first rhythm. This is very simple, just some power chords, nothing much going on, but listen to this. Now I want you to listen to this rhythm and it's the same chord progression, same structure and everything, but we're gonna add just a little bit of spice to it. So check this out. Now, the ultimate, I want you to hear these two rhythms together in this same track here. So listen to this. video I'm gonna show you how to integrate two different rhythms and use them in the same song or at least the same part of a song and I'm gonna show you what I played in both rhythm tracks here we'll go over that piece but then towards the end of the video I'll show you how I recorded this or more so how you can replicate what I just did this is going to take your riff writing and songwriting to like that next level way up there somewhere that might not be the best place to go. Okay, the sky. Yeah, that, that was much better. So you're playing, it's going to go way up there somewhere. Now, before we dive into learning the parts that I just played for you, uh, I just want to name off just a few notable bands that I grew up listening to that do this really well. Uh, and I say do this, I mean they have two different guitar parts going on. And if you listen to these bands, a lot of their songs, if you listen to them with headphones, and if you if you listen to this video with headphones, when you heard me playing both rhythm tracks there, you'll hear the one guitar in this side, on this side, which side is that? That's my left. On the left side, you'll hear one guitar doing one thing. The other side, you'll hear the other guitar doing something a little different. And it just complements. They complement one another, and it just makes the song more full and more powerful, in my opinion. So real quick, a few bands that I grew up listening to, and I still listen to to this day. Uh, Scorpions, they do this really well. Def Leppard, that's another band. Uh, Judas Priest, I think Iron Maiden does a lot of this as well. Uh, and actually, if you listen to some of the Skid Row stuff from early on, uh, all these bands, and of course, I could keep naming more bands, and you can probably think of them now that we're talking about this, that when you listen to them, you hear that one rhythm guitar doing something, but you hear another rhythm guitar doing something a little different sometimes something completely different so let's dive in I'm gonna go over what I played in the very beginning that was the first guitar track that I recorded for you so uh, let me go over that this is the easiest one okay so let's uh, let's bring it in close let me grab my guitar and let's go over this <laughs> I'm in the key of A minor, so the power chords we start out with are A, C, and G. And then you'll notice I do this little, uh, kind of like a southern rock bend there. I don't know, I've been on this kind of like classic heavy metal meets southern rock trip <laughs> lately here, but check this out. <laughs> Real simple, and I'll do that little bend. Again, you don't have to do this. Some people don't like that style. Some people love it. Hey, to each their own. But anyway, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. It's just what I'm doing for this video for whatever reason. But A power chord, C power chord, G power chord. Okay, one more time. <laughs> The 
second time around, I go A, F, G, and I'll throw that little bend in there one more time. Then I'll do, on the third time around, I'll do the, the same thing I did on the first time, okay? We just went over that. Uh, and then to end, I just go to the F and the G. So I'll go through this one more time. What I'm doing here, so instead of just letting that A power chord ring out, I'll go over some of the differences here. Okay, instead of just letting it ring out, I chop it up a little bit and just throw in some some palm mutes and some notes. So. It's like an A power chord, and I'm just palm muting back and forth between those two strings, the A and the D string. And what's cool is I love that, that pulling off of the second fret of the D string to play that open string. Really cool sound. Now from there, of course, we're, we're going to be playing the same progression here, okay? But I'm going to throw in some single note riffs. You're almost going to feel like you're playing lead guitar. Now I, I'll reiterate this uh, more than once here. You don't have to play exactly what I'm playing. This isn't really a lesson video. This is more of a concept to show you how you can how you can write different rhythms and have them come together to make your song just sound cooler, okay? What I'm doing here though. All I'm doing is just a little riff there. So we're going to that C note. The other guitar is playing the C power chord. While it's playing that, I'm doing this. And then I go over to that G note, okay, E string third fret after that. So while while the other guitar is playing that power chord and then going to that little bend to go back to the A, all I'm doing is just playing a single note, then doing the bend going back to the A, okay? That's all I'm doing. You'll notice, just real quick, you'll notice sometimes I'll play a power chord, right? I've got that first finger there but I might switch over to my middle finger to do the bend. And I'll, I'll alternate which finger I use and I, I don't even think about it, but you know, that middle finger is a little bit stronger than the others and to me it's just a little easier to bend, so I might do this. It might be easier for you just to use your first finger. That makes more sense actually. But sometimes I don't do things that make sense and it just works to each their own but i just like to share those little uh those little notes with you okay so from there we do a really cool riff we go back to that a that a power chord now this is a cool riff okay okay and i'm gonna break that little riff down because it's so cool i do want you to learn this real quick and it's all on one string which makes it cool now remember the other guitar is playing while you're doing well that second guitar rather that's doing that okay so uh we start out on that first fret of the e string we're on the e string for this entire riff here it's real easy you don't need tabs just listen and, and, and work with me here okay so we're on the first fret and then we pull off to no fret then i go to the third fret and slide up to the fifth fret and then I'll go back to that little bend. One, zero, three, slide to five, then go back to three, and then do your little, your little bend there. And then we just kind of repeat that first part again. And then of course I'll end with the F and G like we did, okay, before. But just kind of follow, follow me here. <laughs> then 
That very last part, I actually merged the two guitars together. Not really merged them together, but I, I sync them up. I played that exact last part the exact same way with the second guitar track as I did with the first track. So that's another cool thing, um, real quick before we move on. That's another cool thing that you can do when you're when you're recording this, when you're writing these rhythm parts. That second guitar rhythm, it doesn't have to be entirely different, okay? Maybe you just have one or two parts that are different. Maybe you want to harmonize, because you can do that too. If you're playing a lot of single note riffs, you could harmonize, right? You could play the third or fifth note or whatever you want to play. Uh, that's just, we'll get deep into that in another video. But you just, just to say you don't have to play something different the entire time. You can kind of come back and have it playing the same thing the first guitar is playing, then break off into something else, come back. That just adds more dynamics to your rhythm. Now we've got to dive into the studio and I'm going to kind of take us back and start from scratch here, okay? Uh, and I'm not going to make this a recording tutorial. I've got a recording tutorial out there. Actually, I'll put a link uh, to that in the YouTube description if you want to go catch that video. I'll either link to the video or the blog post, which also has some video in it. You guys know I, I also write articles on my website, jasonstallworth.com. Uh, a lot of times I'll just go deeper into some of the videos because when I do a video like this, I might not quite capture everything and I'll think of other stuff after the fact, so I'll follow it up with a blog post. So my website, jasonstallworth.com, that's a very good source. If you go to that site and just click on blog, that's a very good source uh, to learn from as well as my YouTube channel. Okay, so let's get into the process here. First of all, I I always set like a BPM, a, you know, beats per minute. That's my tempo. Uh, in this case, what is it? It is 141. Just kind of wanted a nice, uh, kind of like a, a hard rock meets classic heavy metal BPM. And this seems to work. Of course, you can have it at any BPM, but this worked well, 141, for the vibe that I was going for here, okay? What I do after that is I use Easy Drummer, Tune, Tune Tracks Easy Drummer. Now, you guys know real quick, uh, for my real albums that I put out there, the one I'm recording right now, uh, in my last album, I hired a real drummer for that. So what I'm sharing with you now is not something that I would put out there uh, as an album or a single or anything like that. I would hire a real drummer. I, I bring that up briefly because I just feel like that's important. I didn't do that for my first few albums that were just instrumental albums. I just feel like your music is going to be that much greater if you put more effort into it and hire people to play real instruments, okay? Just want to make that point and I'll get off my soapbox. But anyway, for, for videos like this and demonstrations and when I'm writing, I do use Tune Tracks Easy Drummer. So I don't program drums, guys. Uh, and that's why you don't see any videos on my channel on programming drums. What I do is I find a loop. I've got metal, uh, the metal machine and the death metal pack. And I've got like some American rock pack. So with, with Tune Tracks Easy Drummer, and I'm sure other drum programs have this as well, uh, there are other packs or plugins or whatever you want to call them that are available that's going to give you some different drum sounds and drum loops. So I just go through there and I kind of know where everything is now because I use it so much for videos like this uh, and I find a loop that's going to be kind of close to what I want and I just use that. I'll throw it in there and I'll duplicate it or whatever. Uh, if I've got a different part of the song that I'm demonstrating for a video like this, I might use a different loop for that part, verse, chorus, and so forth. And this is where I record my first guitar track. And in this case, what I did is I just opened up a track for guitar. Uh, by the way, I am using STL, uh, STL's Amp Hub plugin on this, and I'm using their Orange Amp. This amp from this plugin is, in my opinion, just phenomenal. I love it. I've been doing some work with them. This is not sponsored, by the way. I'm not getting paid for this, uh, but they've been giving me plugins ahead of time to kind of demo and test for you guys. You guys have seen some other videos out there for that as well. Anyway, I'm kind of getting off track. Speaking of tracks, I record my guitar track, my first guitar track, which in this case was our what I call our simple rhythm, okay? After I record that first guitar track, what I like to do at this point is I will go ahead and I'll hard pan that track all the way to the left side. From here, I will open a new guitar track, which oftentimes I'll duplicate the actual track itself, not what I recorded, 
just the track so that it carries over that plugin. Most studios will do this for you, right? Because uh, if you add a new track, well, then you got to drag the plugin over, and it's just a few more mouse clicks. Not really a big deal, but this is just kind of a shortcut. I'll go to the track I just recorded, and I'll duplicate just the track, not the track and the recording. This is important. If you're layering guitar, so to speak, which that's not what we're doing, we're recording something different for the second track, and I, this is pretty much what I always do, okay? I encourage you to do that as well. But if you just duplicate the track and that guitar track that you recorded, that will do nothing, absolutely nothing for you. I've had this question asked many times on my channel and in videos that I've put out there for recording. Well, why can't I just duplicate the entire track and just use that and pan it? Well, it, all that's gonna do is just increase the volume. Here's the thing, even if you were to record that second track doing the exact same thing the first guitar was doing, the fact that you actually play and record that second track, you're going to have some slight variances between those two tracks. That's what will bring your music to life. It's gonna sound so much better. You don't want it to sound so ultra polished, AKA just duplicating the track to, it's just gonna increase the volume, it's not gonna do anything. So I'm kinda of getting off track with all these little extras, that, but I like to share this stuff with you guys and I hope that it helps you. So. You know, of course, let me know in the comments if it is helping you. All right, so we duplicate the track. We've got our second guitar track there now. What I will typically do, and I'll go ahead and hard pan that to the right. So now I've got my first track hard panned all the way left. I've got my second track that I'm going to record now panned all the way to the right. So we've got that true stereo effect, which is really, really cool. I will also make a slight change in the amp if I'm recording with a real amp or the amp simulator. Oftentimes what I'll do is I'll just place the mic over a little bit to one side or the other or look closer. I'll just make a slight shift because a slight shift in tone gives another dimension to that slight variance that you'll have between the two guitars. And of course, we're going to be playing something different as well. So I want there to be another slight difference in there as well, which again, just brings your mix to life. All the stuff that we're talking about uh, just really, really helps the mix, okay? So now we record the second guitar track. Get it down and boom, I'm done. Well, one more thing, I always go back and I, I've got a five string uh, LTD D5 bass. Uh, I always like to record bass tracks, even for videos like this that, you know, this is just for YouTube here. Uh, but I always like to record a bass track. It just sounds so much better. Having that bass track will also allow you to kind of go back and listen to the guitar parts. And then you can say, well, do I have too much here in the guitar? Do I need to take some things out? Do I need to add some things? Because that bass is really gonna fill in that bottom end and just give you this explosive, just full, uh, full sound, okay? So you may go back and be like, okay, well now maybe one of those guitars, even though I've got some cool riffs, maybe it's a little bit too much. What if I back off a little bit? It might sound better. Or what if I add a riff or whatever? It just helps you make those decisions having that bass line in there. So guys, let me know if you have any questions about this video. I really hope this was helpful for you. We went over a lot of stuff in this video. Uh, real quick before we end, please head over to the description of this YouTube channel. A uh, couple things that I want you to just go through real quick. One, if you don't have my free metal guitar practice guide, absolutely get that. Uh, next, if you haven't gotten into one of my online guitar courses, I've got two courses out there right now. One's called Metal Riff Master. Uh, this will really help you take your metal rhythm skills to that next level. There's actually a, a lead guitar bonus module in there and a, and a riff writing module in there too. That's the two bonuses, but uh, check that out. It'll take you to a page. That link will take you to a page and you can learn how that course can help you. I know a lot of you are in that now and, and have already taken it and I appreciate all the awesome comments you guys have given me for that. Uh, also, I've got a Metal Guitar Apprentice, a course called Metal Guitar Apprentice. That is my beginner's metal guitar course. So if you're just starting out playing metal guitar, uh, or if maybe you stepped away from it uh, for a while. I know a lot of you watching my channel that stumble on my channel, you tell me things like, man, I used to play 10, 20, 30 years ago. I just, I didn't have time to keep going or just lost interest. And 
I watched one of your videos and now I'm, <laughs> I've got the passion. So that's a, that's a good refresher course and also of course good for beginners that, that will go over the basic power chords and palm muting, alternate picking, stuff like that. Uh, so all the links to everything that I just mentioned, those are in the description. And guys, I appreciate all the support, all of you who have bought my courses, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, but again, if you don't have my free practice guide, get that first before you buy any of my courses. Get the free stuff first and go through that. Then you can make a decision, hey, is Jason's teaching style, is it for me or is it not? And we can just go from there. But again, leave me any questions you have on this video below. I love reading through the comments that you guys, you know, you guys have and the questions. And I, again, I know we covered quite a bit in this video, but I truly hope that it is helpful. And thank you for hanging around this long, watching the entire video. Uh, that really helps my channel. On that note, the last few notes here, please give this video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Uh, if, you, if this video really helped you, please feel free to share it with someone as well. That really helps this channel as well. So guys, thank you once again. Until the next video, you know what to do. Keep it metal.